in the last section we have discussed the various components of the food their functions sources and the concept of balanced diet to meet the requirements of the body we have already seen that the diet with all the nutrients in its basic requirement for proper growth and development thus it can be understood that the person who do not consume the required nutrients will naturally show the retarded growth and development this condition of undernourishment is called as malnutrition watch the difference in the level of growth between a well fed baby and an undernourished or malnourished baby malnourishment may be caused due to many reasons following are some of those reasons willful starvation or low food intake this condition is commonly seen in youth who are very conscious about maintaining their physical fitness it could also be because of the poor health of the individual poor health due to infections repeated attacks of diarrhea and roundworm infections lack of awareness of nutritional qualities of food nutritional requirements irrational and wrong beliefs about food and wrong feeding habits socio economic factors such as poverty also leads to malnutrition poor quality of housing sanitation and water supply leads to poor health conditions which further leads to malnutrition based on the duration and the amount of nutrients missing in the diet the effects of the malnutrition can be classified into two broad categories a short term effects of malnutrition and b long term effects of malnutrition friends look at this person he's not taking any food for days after a week the person becomes very weak and dull but on the 8th day he's fed with a complete diet in a day or two he returns to his normal life during starvation initially the body fat reserves are used till they are finished in later stages the carbohydrate reserves are moved at last even some proteins are used until these reserves are available the person compensates the deficiency and once these nutrients are provided the person becomes normal it is an example for short term effects of malnutrition the long term effects of malnutrition are different in adults and children Once the stored carbohydrates and fats are used up, body starts using proteins to generate energy. We all know that proteins play a very important role in the body building. Proteins form the bulk of muscles and bones. During starvation, the proteins of the muscle tissue come out and generate energy. As a result, the person loses the muscle mass due to which the person becomes very weak. and fails to perform his daily activities and avoids doing heavy work the body becomes prone to various infections however when such people are given a proper diet they recover quickly and become normal the effects of malnutrition on children is similar to that of adults but the severity of the effects is more in children as the children do not have sufficient amounts of carbohydrates fats and protein reserves in the body in addition to this the metabolic activity of child is also high therefore the long term effects are more severe and child starts losing body mass very quickly when compared to adults in addition to this children have very low resistance and cannot defend against diseases recurrent infections are common and fall sick very frequently the most common disease seen in these children 
is persistent diarrhea which further weakens the child. Malnutrition in children is broadly classified into three types. Calorie malnutrition. This is seen in children who are given insufficient amounts of energy, providing nutrients such as carbohydrates and fats. This type is also called as energy malnutrition. Protein malnutrition. In this, children who are given the diet with insufficient proteins or fed with proteins containing lesser amounts of essential amino acids. Protein calorie malnutrition. This type is seen in children who are given poor quality of food and energy, giving carbohydrates and proteins. Quashiorkar and marismis are the two common forms of protein deficiencies. Till now, we have discussed about a condition where sufficient nutrients are not provided in the diet, that is, condition of malnutrition. There is also another case contrary to deficiency of food. It is called obesity, where too much food intake turning out to be very harmful. Present statistics show that population with obesity is increasing day by day. This may be due to changing lifestyle patterns. Let us start our discussion with Kwashiorkar. Kwashiorkar literally means sickness of the deposed child. That is, a disease the child gets when the next baby is born. What does it mean? Let me explain. Usually, when a mother gives birth to her second child with a little gap, say one or two years from her first child, the mother stops giving milk to the first child and she gives him alternate foods containing more of carbohydrates and less of protein. Thus, this resulting in protein malnutrition called kwashiorkor. Kwashiorkor is an African word because it was first identified in African country Ghana. Let us now see how a child with Kwashiorkor appears. Kwashiorkor generally occurs in children between 1 to 5 years. Child shows retarded or stunted growth. Body parts appear swollen, particularly legs and hands due to accumulation of water in the tissue or intercellular spaces. Frequent diarrhea is common. Muscles are poorly developed, hence appear very weak. Hence, the children do not show any interest in playing. Skin becomes dry and it shows a discoloration and is pale. Face becomes fluffy and is moon-shaped. Appetite is reduced. Marasmus literally means to waste. It mainly occurs in children under one year of age. Marasmus is due to deficiency of both proteins and carbohydrates diet but predominantly is due to calorie deficiency. The child is weaned out before one year and is fed with low proteinaceous and carbohydrate diet. This deficiency is also seen during famines. The main features of marasmus include Due to deficiency of carbohydrates and proteins, which are essential for growth and development, child appears to be very weak and lean and looks small for their age. Body weight is 60% less than expected weight. A marasmus child does not show swelling in the body. This is a major difference between marasmus and kwashiorkor. Limbs and ribs are very prominent as there is no fat under the skin and the skin appears folded and dry. Abdomen appears to be swollen. Hair growth is reduced and it will have a faded color. The child is highly irritable and has increased appetite. Obesity is an abnormal increase in the body weight due to excessive fat deposition. 
It is basically a disorder of excess calorie intake or simply overeating coupled with lack of physical exercise. Obese persons look very stout and weight is more when compared to normal people of same age, sex and height. Students, it is to be remembered that every 7 calories of excess consumption leads to 1 gram of fat deposit into the adipose tissue making it grow. It cannot be said that obesity is only due to overeating because obesity contributing factors are many. Let us list out a few. Obesity due to lack of physical exercise. It may be due to hormonal imbalance. Example, Cushing syndrome. Obesity may be resulted due to genetic defects also. Let us now look at this animation to understand how actually obesity problem starts. Here is a six-year-old boy crying for unknown reasons. To control him, the mother offers him some food. This gradually makes the infant habituated to get the junk food which further leads to overeating habits. As this food contains more fat, it is continuously deposited in the child, turning him obese and stout. These obese children become an object of fun to their friends and are constantly teased by them which prevent them from going out and playing and thus becoming very frustrated. The child compensates his frustration by overeating which further complicates the problem. The complications of obesity are many. They may range from diabetes to cardiovascular and gallbladder problems. As we have seen obesity is caused by ourselves. Hence it can be cured only by ourselves. If we keep in mind that the energy consumed by us should not be more than energy expended by us, we can ourselves burn more calories thus reducing obesity. What should be done to burn more calories and what are the basic facts to be remembered? Let's see. Regular physical exercise. Weight reduction should be gradual. Sudden reduction is dangerous. Along with exercises, energy intake should also be reduced by avoiding eating energy-rich foods like oil, cheese, butter, etc. Obese people are to be encouraged to take healthy foods like vegetables and fresh fruits. Once the obesity is reduced, we should not stop doing regular exercise because the number of fat cells that were increased before will not change and therefore Weight may recur if exercises are stopped. 